Okay people, Sean Stewart here, back in the Organized Chaos Carpentry Shop, and we are here talking about the basics in the trades. Stuff trades people wish they knew getting into the trades, and stuff to help you at home. I'm a general carpenter, and we'll be bringing in some experts along the way. Today we're talking about six cuts made by a skill saw, or, or a circular saw, or whatever you want to call it. This saw right here. I'm gonna, I know... I know the technical name is circular saw, but I grew up calling it a skill saw, and therefore I'm just not gonna be able to get out of that. And so, this video is sponsored by Enterprise Brandt, and we're getting into it. At the core of Organized Chaos, we are a trades mentorship program for teenagers, and because of that, I'm going to stop and give mentors in our shop that work with the students a couple helpful hints as they go along. And so, let's get into six safety tips before we get going. The first being that your base plate of your, of your circular saw has to be touching the wood before you start out your saw, every time. The second thing is that your blade of your saw needs to be running full speed before it touches the piece of wood. Third, blade height. We don't need to be exposing more blade than necessary when we're working with the saw. So right now, we have a good blade height. But if we were running this through a piece of plywood, we'd want to adjust our blade height so we, didn't, we were exposing less blade. The fourth thing I want to talk about is cutting position. So you always want to cut so your board will be falling. If you cut in between your saw horses, then the board is going to pinch on your blade like that. And, you, and then you're gonna have some jamming and your blade's gonna either stall out or try and be kicking back at you. And you, you really just don't want that. Number five is that your blade, after you've made your cut, comes to a complete stop before you bring it down to your side or you put it on the ground. That is because these saws have been known to once in a while have a guard catch and whether it's from your piece of wood that you just cut or another reason and therefore it might try and drive along the ground and over your foot or whatever it be. And the last, the last safety tip is that your board, if you're new to a, a circular saw, your board should be clamped and you can clamp it in a variety of ways. You can have a clamp or you can get a hammer and nail out and clamp it down. And that is so you can have two hands on the saw when you're cutting. Let's get into six common cuts using a circular saw. The first and most common cut is a cross cut, which simply means going across the grain with your cut. And now this is done, has been, I've seen it done in many ways, and we'll show you some of them. So first we've got to mark a line out. So, one way I've seen it done that I don't do personally is putting your square, holding your square in the right spot and using it as a guide to run your saw along like a fence. The second way I've seen it done is just drawing your line and going for it. And that's the way we're actually gonna show you today. All saws, well, at least all saws I've seen have a groove like this. It can be an indent or a straight uh, groove and that is where your it lines up with your blade and so when you're going on your line you want to sit that that groove right on your line and that will get you started for when you're going and then you got two hands on the saw you can start you start your you have your uh, base plate on the piece of wood your saw is back from the piece of wood in terms of your blade and you just start your saw. and you follow your line through. You, you're watching your, where your blade's cutting and you are, are following that line through. Once you get over halfway, your blade is gonna go straight on its own a lot easier. When you start out, if you start in the wrong spot, just pull back a little bit and try again. And so, let's get it done.
Your saw has a little window right through there that you can see your blade on, or you can look over this way. Next, we're going to get into a rip cut. So, a rip cut goes along the grain of, the, of, the, of your piece of wood. And so, let's say I'm cutting that line right there. It is all the same ideas as a cross cut, except you're going long ways. And so, my board's clamped down, two hands on the saw, all the same thing. So, in your rip cut, some things you gotta keep in mind is, especially if you're doing a long length, you gotta make sure your path is clear because you're gonna want, you're gonna want to be able to walk with your saw. You also wanna make sure that your extension cord is gonna be able to follow along with you. Many times, if you don't have it right, it'll get caught on something and you're right at the end of the cut and you're just, it's, it's uncomfortable and it becomes unsafe. The next thing you need to keep in mind is where you're cutting. So, if I needed to cut this whole length of the board, I wouldn't have been able to because I have my clamp here. But on top of that, if you are cutting on top of something, I would have cut right through my sawhorses. Now for me, that's not a big deal, but if you're cutting on your kitchen table, that, that would be a big deal. Miter cuts are very similar to cross cuts because as they do go across the grain, the one distinct difference is that Whenever you're cutting anything with a significant angle, the guard tends to not move up for you as you're going. And so what you want to, what you can do is you can pull the guard up your, yourself as you're making that cut. That's what this little handle here is for. But you have to make sure you know where your finger placement is. And so hand flat on top and bring it around. You keep keep it safe. Now, if you're if you're in an organized chaos shop and you're a mentor, one thing I suggest is if somebody's making a cut, you you as the mentor can have the guard hold the guard up for them while they have two hands on the handles. And so, let's make that cut. And let's get into a bevel. In a bevel cut, you actually change the angle of the base plate. So you typically have a release on the front of your saw and you can change the angle on your base plate. I locked it in here at 45 degree angles, which it had some sets I could feel. And I'm going to mark my line straight across my board. and I'm gonna go cut that. A big difference is that this groove that we were using before no longer lines up with the saw blade. When we change the angle, we change where the saw blade was in position to the base plate. And so, saws often have a distinct other groove for a 45. And so, we're gonna be following that groove on the, with what we just set our plate to. Now, if you were setting it to a different angle altogether, you kind of got a guess in there approximately where you would be. And so, I'm gonna make this cut. And our sixth and final cut is the compound miter. Did he say six? Pretty sure that was only five, right? We got cross cut, rip cut, miter, bevel, 
and compound. They're supposed to be six. We we only filmed five. <sighs> okay. So Sam lets me know that uh, I can't count. Apparently, that was only five cuts. I forgot to do the plunge cut, and so we're back in the shop, uh, different day, redoing this shot. So I'm here doing a plunge cut. So let me show you what a plunge cut is. Let's say we wanted to cut this square out of this piece of plywood for a roof vent or whatever it is. Sorry, OSB, not plywood. Um, and that would be a typical plunge cut. And we would be doing plunge cuts most often in sheet goods like OSB or plywoods, but you can do it in other stuff. The first rule is that your plate is always touching. The second is we might as well adjust our blade height so that we're not cutting too far through so we, got, we don't have exposed blade below. Some cases we don't even know what's below there so the less blade showing the better. Um, and let's, let's do this. So, Find our line. line, we can line up with our line so that we know where we're, we're heading before we even start the blade. L lift your guard, like this. Start your saw. Plunge cut. And our sixth and final cut is the compound miter. And so, what that is, is a combination of the miter cut and the bevel cut. And so, not only is our saw going to be on an angle on a 45, the base plate, we're also going to make a line on a 45. And so, an angle this way and an angle that way. Here it goes. You have to take into account the combination of things you learned from the last two. And so therefore, we're going to have to lift the guard up because we are doing a miter cut. Um, and we are also gonna have to follow the groove of the bevel cut. Well, I hope that helps you feel a little bit more confident with a skill saw in your hands. And those are the six typical cuts that are used when working with a circular saw. There are some variations like raising up the blade to make a dado cut. And there's, there's guys out there that have had a skill saw in their hand for the last 30 years and they can do some pretty fancy things with it, but we're not gonna get into that today. If you're interested in the tools we use, they're down below in the description. While you're down there, we might as well comment and leave a like. And if you're stopping by for the first time or you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you back in the shop soon.